Chapter 3 Friend or Enemy Long, long ago, an honest and truthful man was journeying through a dense forest. After walking a long distance, he was tired, hungry, and thirsty. Soon he found a well. It seemed to be a disused well, but being thirsty, he decided to look in and find out if it had water or not. When he looked in, he saw someone inside. He even heard voices crying for help. The honest and truthful man looked in again. This time he saw a snake, a lion, and two men inside. They were trying their best to come out, but couldn't do so. Then the snake spoke. Please, help me out of this dingy well, and I will never forget your good deed. The man thought for a while, as he was really terrified of snakes. He said, Just the thought of a snake makes me shudder. If I take you out, you may bite me. The snake said, I promise you, good man, that I will not harm you. Please, please help me. With the help of a rope lying nearby, the man helped the snake out. Before leaving, the snake thanked the man and said, Remember me. Whenever you need help, I will be there at your service. Before I go, I want to warn you against the two men, the officer in the king's service and the goldsmith. They are evil by nature and may harm you. Saying this, the snake went away into the forest. Then the lion begged the man to take him out of the well. The man said, I am terrified of wild animals, especially lions. You must be hungry, as you have been trapped in the well without food for many days. Who knows, you might eat me up. The lion said, Believe me, good man, I will not harm you. Take my word and trust me. The man thought for a while and decided to help the lion. The rope was too thin, so he pulled out a few strong vines that were growing nearby to help the lion. Soon, with some effort, the lion was out of the well. The lion thanked the man and said, Don't be scared of me, my friend. Think of me whenever you want my help, and I will be there. But before going, I think it is my duty to warn you against helping the goldsmith and the officer. The good man stood near the well and thought, should I rescue the two men or not? He was in a dilemma, but soon he relented, thinking about the families of the two men. Using the vines, the good man pulled the two men out. The two men thanked him profusely and promised to reward him when he visited their homes. After completing his journey, the man again passed through the same forest and met the lion. The man and the lion were delighted to see each other. The lion gave the man a beautiful gold bracelet as a parting gift. The good man then decided to visit the officer and the goldsmith in their city. Both the officer and the goldsmith were very polite and all courtesy to him. The three men sat and shared their experiences. All was well till the good man showed them the parting gift from the lion. Both became jealous and promptly reported the matter to the king. The king had a son who had gone hunting into the forest but never returned. Soldiers were sent by the king all over the kingdom to look for the prince. The king even deployed a town crier for each town and village to announce that anyone who found any clue to his disappearance or found any of his hunting gear or ornaments would be suitably rewarded. Now the bracelet that was a parting gift from the lion to the man was indeed the prince's bracelet. The officer, who was now posted as a courtwal, a bailiff, in the king's service, arrested the man without any delay and threw him into the jail. He even ordered his subordinates to torture him. Though the man told them again and again that the bracelet was a gift from his lion friend, no one believed him, not even the courtwal. The king ordered that the man be put to death. The man and lost all hope. Feeling desperate and in need of someone who could help him, he remembered the snake. The snake appeared before him and asked, How can I help you, my friend? The man narrated the incident that had taken place. The snake said, I had told you not to rescue the two men, but you paid no heed. But as a friend, I will help you out of this tight spot. The snake then told the man his plan. 
I am a venomous snake. I will go and bite the queen at night. The queen will faint and lie senseless. She will be in great agony and pain. The king will send for physicians to cure her. At that time, you must send a word to the king that you can cure the queen. The rest I will manage. That night, true to his word, the snake bit the queen. The queen shrieked in pain and fell. No one knew what happened. The king did not know what to do. He sent for the best physicians, but it seemed as if the queen's last hour had come. There was wailing in the king's palace. The next morning, the good man was to be punished. As a last wish, he requested to be allowed to treat the queen. His request was granted. As soon as he entered the queen's chamber, he saw his friend, the snake, coiled up near the queen. When the snake saw the man, he put his mouth to the wound and drew the poison. As soon as the poison left the queen's body, the queen sat up and looked around. The king was very happy and thankful, but he could not forget what he thought the man had done. The man again tried his best to convince the king that he had not killed the prince, but the king did not believe him. He even called the courtoil and the goldsmith as witnesses, but they told the king that the man was lying and they had never ever met him. The man was in despair. He did not know what to do next. Suddenly he thought of his two animal friends, the lion and the snake. As soon as he thought about them, the lion appeared with his great pride of lions, and the snake appeared with his family. The palace echoed with the majestic roaring of lions. The entire court was astonished and terror-stricken. The lion addressed the gathering, O oh, citizens, please listen to me. This man is truthful and honest. He has not killed the prince. The bracelet has been given to him by me as a parting gift. I found the bracelet near a small hut in the forest. In the hut lives a sage who treats people with his medicines. It has been noticed by many that a young man is being treated by the sage these days. I advise the king to send his soldiers to find out if it is the prince who is being treated by the sage there. Saying this, the lions and the snakes disappeared. The king was elated to hear that the prince could be alive and was finally convinced that the man was telling the truth. So he sent his soldiers to look for the prince and punished the courtwal and the goldsmith. As for the truthful and honest man, he was freed and escorted with honor back to his city.